versus someone who just couldn't care less about them mm-hmm. for twenty thousand bucks a year. You know, so that was uh, another great moment of emotional connection with my father. Um, <laughs> but really, the book spends actually proportionately to, to the whole. It spends very little time talking about my dad's involvement in intelligence because I think the book is fundamentally about life growing up with an alcoholic father, about the search for love mm-hmm. that uh, in my own, uh, by the time I was in my mid-20s, full-blown alcoholism, I've had 25 years of sobriety this February. Oh, good Girl, for you. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Gee, this, this show is getting to be like a moment of tremendous intimacy. For me. <laughs> it really is. We're starting to connect at a very deep level. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and about that journey, and, and, and so it you know, at one point in the book, I basically say, look, the, the odyssey, according to some literary critics, is the headwaters of, West, of our Western literary canon. Hmm. And I think that's true. I think we're all in search of a father. And, and regardless of how good that childhood was, I think there's some spiritual um, dynamic at work that we don't really understand. Yeah. And, um, and ironically, of course, the gospel is a story about a God who goes in search of his children, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> or her children, mm-hmm. depending on how you want to view it. So um, I love the idea that we've got these two stories running a contradiction, and it's wonderful. Well, and talk a little bit more about what you share in the book about, uh, you know, the, the Jesus part of the, of the yeah. book, Jesus, My Father, the CIA, and Me. Sure. Well, I mean, I, as a boy, I, I would say I had a profound, resonant, love for Jesus in the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. I did not like Catholic school. It was like something out of the Middle Ages. They should never have let those women around, small children, those nuns. <laughs> they were horrible. Um, but I loved the Mass. Mm. I absolutely loved it, even as a little boy. And I was particularly taken with the Eucharist and the Eucharistic experience. I just was kind of one of those creepy kids who got it, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, and who had a, a rich sort of religious imagination. Uh, later on, I got involved in Young Life in high school. At that point, our family life was really on the skids. We'd lost tons and tons of money. My father was, you know, in and out of hospitals all the time. Um, and, you know, I was found by some guys in Young Life. And, you know, I wouldn't say that, the, I mean, by a long shot, I'm not theologically in that world anymore, but, boy, oh, boy, I am... I've never failed to be grateful for that evangelical world at that moment, at least in that iteration. Because they, those because those people knew how to care for you and paid attention yeah, to you and found you to be important. They took uh-huh. me in. Right. You know, they, in some ways they saved my life. They took me in. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm, I'm sort of one of those people who, although I, I feel an obligation at times to speak about my theological differences and how I've evolved, um, I, since that time, I, I would never say probably anything bad hmm. about reasonably minded evangelicals because they were, they were kind to me, really kind. And, and, and that's, that's part of the poignancy of the book as, as people are, are, are finding their way in it is that, yeah, you, okay, you have a little bit of interesting things that have gone on in your life with growing up, you know, in the film industry and, and TV and a dad and the CIA and all of that. But then, you know, everyone's life has its own, has its own little intrigues. But then there's that, that part of, of, look, a person needs to be caught up in a story that's meaningful to them and, and uh, transformative to them. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you write a memoir because you want to make sense of your life. Hmm. I mean, that's, you know, uh, 